What's up, people? It's King Dub the seventh, and it wasn't a, exactly a slow week for NALCS, but it wasn't. There weren't many great games. We'll talk about the best game later, but in terms of overall gaming that happened and uh, the NALCS week three, there weren't many close games, and the games that were close weren't that great. Like there are a bunch of sloppy gameplays, but. There were some great plays to be made and a pretty good game to be seen that I like, so let's go over that. So just like always, we're going to start off with the game of the week. And this week, although it was a lot of blowouts and some slow games, there were a couple of really good games. And the best game, I think, was Team Liquid versus Team Impulse. Now, during this game, first it started off very slow with there only being kills. Uh, only being four kills like 15 minutes in so you thought oh no this is just gonna be one of those strategic boring lane pushing who has the better map rotation game then rise ended up getting pretty fed and at one point team liquid was down one to eight in kills and went to foreign towers then you thought well team liquid is just gonna get stopped and they're not going to be able to do anything about it because the other team has a Fed Rise, they have a strong Callista, they have Alistar, and they have a strong Elise. But then Team Impulse pulled out what I like to call the Bronze Solo Q Baron. Now, I'm a big fan of TSM, and in TSM Legends this week, or last week I should say, Reginald made a fact to put a big importance on Baron rushing, telling the teams that one of our telling the team that the best teams in NA will be the teams that are good at rushing Baron. And looking at this game shows exactly why he said that. So Team Impulse tries to rush a Baron at about 21 minutes. And they do this, it probably would have worked if they did it a bit sooner, but they do this with no vision of the enemy's blue side jungle. They don't know where anyone is. Even though Team Liquid didn't have any vision on the map at Baron, they had vision on the map enough to know that Team Impulse wasn't anywhere else except Baron. So all they had to do was go check Baron, and since Team Impulse put so much resources into Baron, they couldn't really fight and had no choice but to back off of the Baron, which gave Team Liquid the chance to push down middle, since they already had a way pushing the mid turret, and they took off a lot of pressure, they took a lot of pressure off of themselves, and they pushed down the mid turret tower. And right after that, it just changed the game around. Because Team Impulse also failed a, uh, a rise flank and lost that team fight. And after that, it was all downhill for Team Impulse. Now, it was a really good game. It was a game of comebacks for Team Liquid. It showed how good their roster could be. And also, to go into the theme of Baron rushing, Team Liquid rushed their own Baron. The only difference is they rushed it at the appropriate time. They had adequate vision on the map to see that Team Impulse wasn't in a position where they could really contest the Baron. Elise was in base, Rise was bot sided and that didn't have any TP. So pretty much after falling down one to eight in kills and being at 1.5k behind, Team Liquid made the plays and made the rotations to catch back up with strong play from Piglet, Lorlo, and Dardop. So I thought it was a pretty good game. Hope and I would love to see how Team Liquid, I guess, progresses from where they were this week and improves on the weeks to come. We're going to talk about the play of the week. Now this play comes from the C9 vs TSM game. Rather than explaining the play to you, I'll actually show it to you. How many licks does it take to stop Yellowstar? He's going for multiple licks on multiple people! What an intake! Haunter teleports in, puts himself in the Glacial Tomb, and Jensen's gonna be the first target. That's double his kill. The calling comes out, and it's gonna oh, get the kill with the laser fist and picks up a double. Now they're moving forward. Rush looks to the entire TSM team as they start to take down his turrets, and C9 going a bit too hard. The law. And last but not least, the player of the week, that MVP for the week. And it's gonna go to Wild Turtle again. He was an MVP for the first week and he's an MVP for the third week. What are you gonna do when a guy has 13 kills in one week? I don't wanna keep giving 
these awards to the same team and players, but Wild Turtles just performing too well right now. I mean, he's leading the LCS in kills. He has the highest KDA of any ADC by double. He's just having an amazing split, and he's probably going to end up being the MVP if Adrian or Rainover don't take it from him because they're both having awesome splits too. But when you have 36 kills, 23 assists, and 4 deaths, he's dying almost only once a week, less than once a game. You're just forming like a superstar at that point. So congratulations Wild Turtle, you're my player of And that ends it for this week. Uh, hopefully by the end of this week I'm able to make a, a video with more to talk about. Hopefully you like this video. Comment your opinion on things that happened this week. Please like this video, subscribe.